Hi there. Welcome to part two of my TRS-80 Model 4 video series. In this part, I'm going to troubleshoot and fix the power supply, and I'm going to show you how I make some boot discs so I can test this machine out. Let's get started. Okay, with the cap blowing out on here, I'm going to remove this power supply so I can fix this bad filter cap and replace it. I happen to have a replacement one right here. I need to check. Hopefully this is compatible. If this is not, I'm just going to remove that and I won't put it in until I get the replacement part. It's not really necessary for the power supply to work. And just like I thought, you can tell that this capacitor here, 22 microfarad, had a little bit of an explosion and man, does it still smell. Fortunately, there's another one of these little square caps here. It's a 0.01 microfarad. I don't have a replacement for that one. Uh, it hasn't blown yet, but it is connected directly across uh, the mains input, which is right here. So, uh, yep, this one blew just like it did on my Apple III. And the replacement one I have is an X2 and 0.22 microfarad. On appearance, the rest of the capacitors, they look fine. A lot of them are Nichicon. Don't see any kind of bulging. Don't see any kind of goo or leaking down on the bottom area. Yep, everything looks generally okay. They used quality components, luckily. I'd say the rest of this power supply is fine. From a longevity standpoint, it would be prudent for me to replace all of the capacitors on here, but I may not end up doing that. Okay, so I changed the filter cap, and I actually ended up changing both of the mains input filter cap. Here's the one um, that blue that I changed. It's the uh, 0.22 microfarad, and then there's a 0.01 one here as well. It hadn't blown, but I changed it anyways. I didn't have one of these in stock, these little uh, 0.01s. So I just went into my spare parts bin and I found this, whatever this is, some power supply module out of something. And it was much newer than the Tandy, that's for sure. And uh, the right pitch one was sitting right there. So I just yanked it out. Very easy. Okay, so let's do a smoke test. I just replaced both caps. I have the power supply reinstalled. I don't have any of the DC connected. I only have the mains 120 volts connected, which is this cable here. And what's nice is the power switch actually completely cuts off this power supply. No power flows to it when the switch is in the off position. Let's give it a test. Okay, we got some smoking already. Hmm. Wonder if this cap I just put in is bad. This was the one I salvaged off that other board. Huh. And I saw some smoking coming from that. And that's right across the mains. Let's try again. Yep, something is wrong with that cap. Well, that's annoying. All right, try number two. I ended up removing the capacitor. It was my error. It was a 0.01 microfarad and I put in a 0.1 microfarad. So that was removed altogether. So now there's just nothing connected, no DC, just AC and let's turn it on. Okay, no, no weird noises. I'm just gonna get my multimeter and just do a quick test. All right, we got the multimeter here. I have the negative on the common. So we'll just poke around and see what these voltages are. I don't expect them to be great because... Wow, is this thing dead now? Power supply might be dead. 120 volts going in, so we know it's getting power. I wonder if this power supply is like doing some kind of protection because there's no load. May well be. All right, well, I'm going to plug stuff in, and we're just going to see what happens. I mean, I don't see high voltages coming out of it. And this big Molex here. There we go. All right, good. We've got filament on the CRT. It's a floppy drive seek. Let's check these voltages now that there's load. There's the raster showing up. Okay, so the computer's on, and it seems to be working, so let's just test these voltages. Uh, we got... Negative 12 on that rail, 11.7, so the t that's the 12 volt rail there. 4.9, that's the 5 volt rail, looking good. It seems to be working, that all the rails are up and running. Okay, we're going to boot it up, and I'm going to be holding brake, so I think that goes into TRS-80 Model 3 mode. Cassette, memory size, 20, go to 10. Run. There we go. Seems to be working. So the CRT is looking quite good. The sharpness is way better than any of the older TRS-80s. 
Uh, brightness is not particularly great. Yeah, the contrast is turned all the way up. You know, if we turn the brightness up, obviously we get a raster. We're just not getting a lot of uh, differentiation between black and white. It's working, and it's bright enough to use, and it looks very clear, and there's no funny noises coming out of the computer. So one of the issues I have is with this old computer is I have no floppy disks. I wasn't given any with it when I bought it, and I don't have another TRS-80 Model 4, so of course I don't have any disks. I do have some double density floppy disks, and I have an old PC, and that's actually all you need to make some more of these for the TRS-80. Let me show you what I do. To write TRS-80 disk images onto actual physical floppy disks, I use the program IMD. And here's a couple here like TRS-621.disk and DOS-plus-4.disk. These are Model 4 floppy images I downloaded off the internet. 256K uh, size tells us that these are single-sided double-density disks. If they're double-sided, it'll be twice that much, and of course single density will be less. It's what you have to do is they typically are in DMK or DSK format, and you have to convert them to IMD format. I have the binaries for IMD in the previous directory, and there's a DMK to IMD program. What this will do is convert the format like DSK into an IMD, which is how you write it. Even though these are DSKs, it seems that the DMK and the DSK format is comparable. So essentially, you just run this app, and when I hit enter, what it does is it actually made a new IMD file. So if we dir star.imd, there it is, 621. So I just wrote this. If we go back and we run IMD, what we have to do is configure the settings first. So you hit S. On my computer, drive B is the 360K. It's actually a 40K cylinder drive so high density drives are 80 tracks while well, double density is only 40 sides as original double step i'm going to say off what that does is if you have an 80 track drive you could try to write double density discs on it it's not ideal because the head is wrong but it will double step so you do that you exit out of here and we say write and we pick the format and basically it says insert disc so let me put in i'll put in one of these floppies here and you hit enter and it will proceed with the writing. And up here, what you have is up to 80 tracks. Well, remember, we're only gonna write 40, so it's only gonna go to 39 here. And these are the sectors being written. And here it says IMD DMK format, 40 tracks, single-sided, medium density. Medium density is basically double density, and single-sided, single step. I've had really good luck using this particular program to write these floppies. I have never tried it on a high density disk, so I can't tell you if that works for sure, but you could always take the drive out of the TRS-80 and actually plug it into a PC if you don't have anything else to write the disks with. Here's the computer that I use for writing, and this is the 360K five and a quarter inch floppy drive that I'm using, and this is a high density one here. The writing completed, and uh, it says deleted data. I've seen this occasionally, and it doesn't seem to affect the operation. This might be something to do with the way the format is on the TRS-80, but it's written all 40 tracks. It says write complete. So I created a TR-DOS boot disk, and now that the power supply is working, I was gonna give this a try. And off camera, I did give it a try, and it booted, and it actually booted right into DOS, and I was pretty happy. But then something strange started happening with the power supply, and the CRT image was sort of shrinking and getting bigger whenever the floppy drive was being accessed. I have a feeling the 12-volt rail is giving out, and I think now it won't even work at all. So let's just give this a try. The disk is in there, everything's connected, and we're going to boot up and see what happens. Okay, I, I don't know, it's working. <laughs> so it was having a problem earlier and now it appears fine. And it got to the point where it was actually sort of, uh, you could hear the power supply kind of protecting itself or kind of shutting off and on. Uh, now it's not doing it. I don't remember how to use this. But let's give a check of the 12 volts or all the rails actually while we're at it. Let's take a look. Negative 12.4, that looks fine. 11.5, it's a little bit on the low side, so let's do a DIR command and take a look at what happens to that rail. Uh, so see it drops down to 11.3, 11.4. So yeah, this power supply is not working super hot right now. 
Yeah, we're getting 4.5, 4.6 volts, really at the minimum. And the, if we see the uh, DAR command, if we see that weird pulsing that I was talking about as the voltage drops, it's at 11.7 right now. Okay, you know what? When I push on the connector physically, it actually does that. So maybe this is just a bad connection. I'm going to put some contact cleaner on there. I got my favorite Deoxit D5. I love this stuff. It's a lubricant and a contact cleaner. So it's good when you spray it on top of contacts or inside pots. It actually sort of coats it, helps prevent new oxidation from forming. The contacts are relatively clean, but we're going to hit it anyways. And we get it inside here as well. Let me get something to clean up the extra deoxid mess I made. I just got deoxid on this tape and up here on the top of the motherboard. <laughs> okay, let's turn it on after hitting it with the contact cleaner. Boots up normally. So I'm going to push on the power connector on the top again. No, still, still bad. That's not enough voltage. So yeah, I gotta take this off and take a closer look at that power supply. We had a weird guard, you know, kind of, it was booted, but it was weird. And so here's the power supply. And yeah, I think there's a bad solder joint. So this is the DC output. And these two pins here are what go to the CRT. Can we see here, this one is definitely cracked here. So when I wiggle it on the other side, it, it moves very easily here. I'm gonna just check this whole board over for cracked solder joints and do a little repair. I'll reflow all the bad joints. Okay, so I've reflowed all the solder joints. There was a few other ones that were actually cracked as well. So there's a few components on this board that also look like they might've been replaced at one point. There was a little flux residue compared to the rest of the soldering, which was all very clean. Let's plug the power back in and we will see if we have fixed our intermittent problem there. Yep, because when the DIR, the directory is going, I see a little bit of pulsing still on the screen. But uh, touching the connectors doesn't seem to have any... No, actually, I stand corrected. There's still a little bit of fluctuation going on. It's not as bad. So I did a little bit more. I sprayed deoxid into both of these potentiometers, moved them back and forth. I'm well, not sure they were dirty, but I was just noticing a little bit of weird flickering. I think they were fine, actually. I think the issue ended up being that there was a little bit of corrosion or a little dirty on this one. So took that off, put deoxid, kind of put it back on a few times, you know, made sure all these ground connections were stable. Between fixing the cracked solder joints on here and that, we seem to be doing a lot better. You can hit DIR, but we seem to be getting no more strange kind of flickering going on with the voltage. Everything seems to be working as it should. We're looking good. So I think for now, I'm gonna finish cleaning this up, put this back together. Well, that's it for part two. In part three, I'm gonna service and clean the floppy drive and keyboard. I'm gonna give you a close up look at the motherboard and I'm gonna show you how I kind of clean and make the whole computer look brand new again. I hope you enjoyed this part. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your feedback and any questions you might have, so please put those in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.